Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing classifying substances. How we as scientists are able to look at the properties of a substance and decide whether it's element, compound or mixture. So in this video we're going to remind ourselves about the different types of substances that we come across and then also now going to look at the types of properties that we can use to help us to decide what kind of substance things are. So we look at two main categories, physical properties and chemical properties. So in this video, we're gonna go through what um, those mean and some examples of each. So you can help to, to distinguish between the two because um, at first glance, it might be a bit hard to do that. All right, so this, in, in really simple terms, um, we talk about three main types of substances. So firstly, we think about elements. Okay, like sulfur or carbon in the form of diamond that you can see over here. Um, you know, the essential kind of building blocks, the simplest of substances of matter. You can't break them down into anything um, simpler. We also look about compounds, okay, like sodium chloride or table salt here and copper sulfate. And then also mixtures like um, milk and also blood is another example of a mixture. And this, you know, stacks of everyday examples of each of these three things you can think of. But it's when when you're looking at a sample of you know, that's in front of you on the bench, how do you decide which category these things fall into? Especially once you start to get to more complicated examples or more um, abstract examples as well. well how, what can we use to help us to defini definitively answer that question? Okay, so then we, that comes down to properties, the properties of that substance. So firstly, we're going to think about physical properties. And what we mean by that is that properties we can identify by studying the substance itself. What is its essence? I don't mean to sound very philosophical here, but actually just saying, okay, if we only look at that substance in isolation in lots of different ways, what can we learn about how it is? Okay, and so some of the things we might be looking at, we might be looking at hardness for a solid. Obviously, that doesn't apply to liquids or gases, but, um, you know, malleability and ductility for metals, for example. Um, things like melting and boiling point, you know, looking at the temperature at which it makes those transition from one state of matter to another. And then things like electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, the state at room temperature, um, all of these things and then stacks more that we could be thinking of. This is only a really, really just a, you know, an example list. Um, all of these are things that we can use that will give us information about a substance. Especially because, you know, let's say, like in chemistry, it's really common to end up with just a random white substance, white powder. Okay, now a white powder could be salt, white powder could be sugar, it could be baking soda, or it could be something much nastier. It could be anthrax, it could be uh, methamphetamine, okay, or it could be citric acid. You know, like it, it, the, so the idea is that when you're looking at something simple that's in front of you, you need to be able to find out more about it to know whether it's something that you can eat something that's good for you, or something that you should never have encountered in the first place. Um, okay, and so these physical properties can help us to do that. But they can't tell us all the information that we need to know, because we need to know, all right, well, if I put this in water, what's it going to do? Is it going to dissolve or is it going to explode? Okay, because clearly the difference in those outcomes matters greatly. And so that's where we get to chemical properties. So that is not just looking at the substance itself, but how does it react with other substances, elements or compounds in whatever state that might be, in chemical reactions. Okay, so looking at the types of chemical reactions it will undergo. So does it tend to react with lots of things or does it not? Um, and so we would say reactive or inert, inert being um, really unreactive. Okay, does it, is it quite stable or has it the tendency to decompose? Um, whether decompose um, thermally, like by heating, or in terms of light, or by shock, you know, like so physical friction or movement, things that are explosive tend to decompose, um, you know, very easily and, you know, generate a lot of gas, which is why they are explosives. Um, do, does it react with water? Does it react with acids or bases or neither or both? All of this is information that helps us to characterise a substance to help us identify what it is, and what kind of category it might fall into, element, compound, or mixture. Okay, so in this video, we've looked at the three, re revising the three main types of substances, elements, compounds, and mixtures. 
Okay, and just a couple of quick examples of each. We didn't really go through defining them because that, that's that's not really the purpose of this video. But how do we actually help to put something into one of those boxes? We use physical properties like hardness and you know melting temperature and chemical properties, looking at how it reacts with other things to help us to, to know. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.